is Buy to Let Dead. Today, I'm joined by Mark von Grundherr, who is a director at Ben & Reeves, a massive letting agent in London. Mark, is Buy to Let Dead? Talk to me. I honestly, I don't think Buy to Let is dead. I do think that there's been a huge amount of build to rent in the market and you are seeing a lot, a lot, 4.5 billion pounds, 2023 of corporate build to rent investors coming into the market. You are seeing some individual investors leaving the market because of the taxes and the headwinds with, with interest rates where they are. But you have to bear in mind that with corporate people coming into that market, their interest is not on an individual tenant or an individual person who's been there for 10, 15, 20 years, which the government wants to encourage longer term tenancies. Um, Bill to rent, big corporate investors, they're interested in the yield on a spreadsheet for their 500, 1,000, 10,000 units. And then they're interested in exit. They're not interested in very long term, they're interested in exit. And if they're interested in exit, where's the exit gonna be? Who knows, 10 years, 20 years time, are we gonna see a global sovereign fund owning a million homes in the UK? Is that gonna be a problem? I mean, so for anyone not watching this, a global sovereign fund is like, I think uh, Norway has a, like a yep. big lump of money. I think yep. they own like 7% of the world's shares in, you know, in, in publicly listed yep. companies. They could in theory own 100, 200, 300,000 homes. A million. Because my, my point with Bill to Rent is you've got big investors, BlackRock, huge American private equity firm. You've got, as you said, Norwegian's sovereign fund. You've got um, the, a large number of international people, Canadian pension fund. All these pension funds invest money and then they end up with UK assets. Because they're not, they're, not, they're, not they're not worried about building individual blocks. That's what other firms are doing. They're, they're investing to, to then sell on. Own it. Well, well they, they, they will buy individual blocks and they will build them from scratch or they'll buy the stock from developers. But the point, my biggest point and worry is if I was sitting in this chair in 20 years time is now BlackRock have sold to Canadian Pension Fund and Canadian Pension Fund all of a sudden have a million homes or BlackRock have a million homes. They've acquired all this stock which is producing a 5% yield, 5.5% yield up and down the country. And then they want to exit because ultimately their investors want the return. And they will sell to, like you say, a sovereign fund like Norway, China, Taiwan, Korea, you know, Singapore. These have huge wealth national funds. Are we really going to want to sit in the UK and say 20 years down the road that a million of our homes are owned by overseas people. Does it really matter who owns the home as long as the home is fit for purpose, it's a fair rent that's fair for everyone? Yep. Does it really matter? It doesn't matter in terms of who owns it. Save for the fact if you're an individual owner, you tend to personally have an attachment with that property, even if you're overseas. So therefore, if your tenant's been there for eight years and they're in their 80s or 70s, you're not going to say the yield isn't 5.9%, so off you go. You're going to far more be driven by what's good for that tenant to make them, get them stay long term. Because let's be honest, in the, in the buy to let market, you do have landlords with, with tenants that have been there a long time. They don't tend to rise the rent no. in line. So you've almost got like a two-tier market. 100%. So, so probably we might have better properties that are looked after better, but the rents are going to be a lot higher. Bang on on the market. 100%. And we, we see the, the buy, bill to rent landlords we work for, we see their rents 15 to 20% above the market, above the rest of the market. And it's not just, you know, you have to remember, owning a property as an investment property is not just about the rent. It's about you owning something which will increase in capital value over the time, gives you a fixed asset you can pass to your children or the next generation. You look at the wealthiest people in the UK and you strip out the tech billionaires and, the, and those kind of entrepreneurs. Where's the, where's the value? The crown, 
<laughs> the Grosvenor Estate, Cadogan Estate. You take the it's big the wealth people, they're large landlords, and that's how it's built. And I, I worry that in time you'll end up with it all being spreadsheet driven. It's interesting. I did a calculation this morning um, on the, what's happened to gold because I looked. I, li I like to look at what's happening. I mean, and you see, the price of gold has just gone through the roof. Yeah. But if you go back long term, which again I think a lot of people do, don't think long term. The, the price of gold and the price of property, the price of properties has doubled in value compared to gold. Yeah. You would have thought it was the other way around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wouldn't you? I, th I think, you know, my view is there's lots of negativity about because of interest rates around buying property. But I think long term, it's the best hold. Of course it is. Because you can touch it, you can feel it, it goes, tends to go, you know, we're not building enough homes. I don't care what you say, whether, you know, Labour have just gone to government, we're just filming this in late July 2024. I still don't know where they're getting all this money to build all these houses. No. I mean, that's the problem. 100,000 a year, we're short. I mean, I, I worked out, even if they've got the land for free, they're going to have to find £28 billion a year to build these extra houses. Where the hell is that coming from? Well, I, I, I think there's, there's ways that they can fund it. And if I was sitting there as housing minister, I think working with developers is a key way. Looking at, looking at land that is underutilised and reusing it. Looking at commercial stock that you can reutilise. Remember, 100,000 homes is not all in London. Everybody focuses on London. It's across the UK. And there are pockets of land and places that you can reuse. But you're right, it's expensive. Homes are expensive, property is expensive. And I think that's the biggest issue that we have. There's not enough stock and that will keep driving values. And if it drives the value for build to rent corporate landlords, their yield has to follow because their yield has to follow that pay the debt. And so if capital values go up, rents have got to keep on dragging up and therefore it makes it more and more and more Un untenable for a lot of people. It could, in theory, drive more people to buy their own home. Doubt it, but it could do. I doubt it because I think the costs involved, you have to have a larger deposit. There's very little out there for first time buyers right now. I would agree with you in London, but outside London, not. I mean, it, would it surprise you that the rental, pa no, the, the mortgage payments um, on for first time buyers, even now, is 21% less than what it was in 1989? That's amazing, isn't it? And it's 1% less than what it was in, nine, in 2007, just before the property crash. Which is a huge difference. So, you know, <sighs> property ownership is growing, but, yeah. it, but it's not growing like it was when, when you and I were no, young lads. So, of course. Um, interesting times ahead. Mark, thank you very much for your insight there. Thanks. <laughs>